Matt Ryan, 21 to 24, 286 yards, three touchdowns. Still a What's dude. better than this? Guys being dudes. Matt Ryan, that's a dude. Heisman Trophy, Bronco Nagurski Award, Ultimate Dudes. Rashi on my left, Herzog on my right, two dudes. O-line you, bunch of dudes. Dudes to the right, dudes to the left, stuck in the middle with you. WZBC, the Boston College Radio Network, the voice of the Eagles. Hello and welcome to another Wednesday night edition of Two Dudes Sports. I'm Quinn Kelly, here with my broadcast partner, TJ Hartnett, ready to bring you another week in the world of sports. We'll talk a little bit about the college football inaugural uh, 2015 rankings from the College Football Playoff Committee. We'll talk a little bit about uh, BC's game against North, uh, excuse me, North Carolina State this weekend, and then we will talk about some BC hockey, looking very good right now, number three team in the country, and give you our traditional NFL rundown to end the show. That sounds great. Uh, are we both on? I think we're both on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can okay, hear you. Okay, all right. Yours was a little is... shaky, but... Um, I think we're fine now, possibly. That's coming in very hot on mine. We're both coming in. Now mine's buzzing. All right. Now we're good? Oh, now, now we're really good. Yeah, okay. Fury's always going to be trouble with that. Ah, all right, okay, are, all right, all right. Off to a hard right. start, ready to get going. Yeah, that makes no sense for people watching the videos, nope. <laughs> but um, totally justified. Uh, all right, let's get those levels going, and then we can actually take off. All right, so that should be perfect. Um, unless my headphones are just jacked up to an extreme. I think but, they were because it's not coming through on our meters very well. So interesting. Here we go. Okay, TJ. <laughs> All right, I think right there should be pretty good, right at the top there. All right, so college football playoff rankings. Uh, the very first rankings came out, and I would have to say a surprise, number one. Yeah, no doubt. I, so Clemson claiming the top spot in the very first uh, college football playoff ranking of the season. Um, obviously great for the ACC. There's not a lot of depth. There's only two teams in the top 25 right now, that being Clemson and Florida State down at 16 or 17, I believe. Uh, so definitely very, very good that we were able to take the top spot. Yeah. Um, man, mine's really jumping. Anyway, um, Clemson... <laughs> Yeah, Clemson getting that top spot is huge for um, for the program, huge for the ACC, huge for everyone involved in that category. The ACC, um, in the past, has been, or even this year, has been ranked as the weakest of the Power Five conferences. So, honestly, people were shocked. But looking at Clemson, what they've done this year, it's not a shock to me. Clemson is well-deserving of a number one. Uh, it's a little surprising that they are ranked number one, judging by the you know the, the SEC love affair that the college football playoff has, which uh, I think does shine through in those rankings. Oh yeah, no, it absolutely does with a, with a two and a four jumping out uh, and with the four, who the four is ahead of. Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. Big Twelve getting getting uh, really no love. Yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. I was really shocked. I thought. When they were originally going to come out, that they were going to put TCU and Baylor possibly in that Absolutely. top four, being the crazy scores that they are. Uh, so it's a little surprising that neither of them made it, but they will have a matchup later on. And I think whoever wins that matchup and the other one does go undefeated will get that that spot in the end. Absolutely. And you know what it says to me is that we talked about this earlier, and I had said I thought that if if the only loss that either of those two teams had was in the one game to each other and the other one was undefeated, there would be a good chance that both of those teams would make it to the playoffs. Yeah. I think that this first ranking showed that that is absolutely not the case. These teams could be 12 and 0 and 11 and 1 and pending everybody else being two loss. Yeah. They would still probably not both make it. No. Because Clearly, the college football playoff committee does not think very highly of the Big 12. Yeah, there's something against the Big 12 that the college football playoff committee Which, really admittedly, doesn't. Admittedly, I looked, I, I was doing, I was reading up on it when it first came out. Um, and they've had, they've both had very, very weak schedules. Each of them only has one win against somebody ranked in the FPI, or, yeah, FPI's yeah. top 30, which was West Virginia. I, I did see that too. And they only have two and three wins apiece over teams that are above 500. It's coming now in the home stretch. That's was the one, the right. one stat that came out. But that's the thing, because Baylor's Exactly, that's why they're getting no love now. Exactly. Two. Yeah, so. Baylor's strength of schedule and TCU's. TCU takes on Oklahoma or Oklahoma State this weekend, whoever's number 14. 
So that's going to be a huge test Absolutely. for them. Regardless, uh, some of the other names that we're talking about, so just to, just to run through them, Clemson number one, ACC powerhouse, really probably got the nod overall just because of their win over Notre Dame, and you saw how highly they ranked Notre Dame. Um, their win last weekend over NC State, I believe, which was a shootout from start to finish. Yep. So they're, they're showing that their offensive – That was I think that was one of their questions going forward is the ACC has always been ranked as that defensive conference, that one that will you know be in the trenches type of game. You see it with Boston College, a team that hasn't got a win in the ACC this year but is ranked number one in five categories in the ACC and has a ranking in the top four in every single category in the ACC, which is just astonishing to say you don't have a win to your name after that. But um, – Clemson coming out and being the offensive powerhouse that they are, it's it's it shows how deserving they are to get a top spot. Obviously, they're going to be in the top four. Yeah. After after all they've done, they lose to Notre Dame. They're not in the top four, as you can see, with Notre Dame not being in the top four. But you can tell overall that Clemson is deserving of that top spot. Are there other teams that, that are, could give them a run to their money? Absolutely. That's a very, very questionable number one. But I like it, of course. I'm ACC biased. No, of course I like it. Absolutely. Number two, LSU. You agree with that over Ohio State? I agree with that. I would. That would be my one question. I think they give Clemson a good run for their money at number mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I like Clemson. I, excuse me. I like LSU a lot. I think this, this week team, will tell a lot. This week, this will, week tell will tell a lot. Tell I a am lot. amped up for this game. I cannot I wait. Um, oh, boy. It, it's going to be absolute insanity. It and whoever, really is. whoever wins this game, the other team's going to be knocked out of that top four. So it's not going to stay for long. Even if LSU does lose to Alabama, Alabama's going to jump up to their spot, presumably, or at least number three. And LSU, do you think LSU goes to that number four spot, or they go out and drop all the way to somewhere between six and eight? Um, it depends on the loss, obviously. Yeah, how bad but it is and so on. If it's, if it's a very close game, if it's like the year that they played each other twice, once in the regular season, mm-hmm. which was the nine to six game, if you see that type of a game, then I would say that They're they deserving. get the four spot. Mm-hmm. And they are deserving. Look, I... Alabama needs to win this game for me. LSU, not, oh, yeah. not the same way. Because the, the committee has already proven that they're going to put a one-loss SEC team mm-hmm. in there over an undefeated Big 12 team. Yeah. So if LSU takes this one loss, then you know they can still be in this if they win out. My thing is more if Al- Alabama can't take this loss, obviously. Sure. They need this win, and I think that it would verify claims made – by the college football committee that they are a good enough team. Yeah, and and the other the other interesting fact of the the four teams is number three Ohio State sitting there. They still have to play Michigan State, who dropped all the way to number eight. They're still undefeated. Yeah, Michigan State's one of the toughest teams, and like and that more pays tribute to the fact that they won on pure luck against Michigan with the which the with the bops, botched snap punt. <laughs> that led to a um, blocked punt and a touchdown in the final seconds for Michigan State. So I feel like that's the reason they got dropped all the way to number eight. Are they deserving of a number eight? Absolutely. But are they deserving of something higher? Much more, absolutely. They are a very good team. I've said it since the beginning. AP's ranked them number two since the start, and they've slowly fallen back after you know winning week after week after week. Is it their strength of schedule that comes to play? Of course but overall, Michigan State dropping all the way to eight. Another thing surprising, or not really surprising, but um, more more scary for someone um, that's in this conference is the Pac-12 not getting any representation along with the Big 12 no. not the getting in there. Really not even being close. No, I think I mean, the closest is Stanford at ten. At eleven. Eleven, really even better rankings. Yeah, and you know, I got obviously Florida State's way down at sixteen. So if you look at it. You know, my prediction was off. I think that it could be two Big Twelve teams. I don't think that it's just going to be. It's just not the now. way it's going to be because just... they're they're undefeated right now, and they're both eight and zero. Or well, Baylor seven and zero. Okay, so they're sitting at six and eight respectively. They are not as as we said already. They're not going to come away with a twelve and zero and an eleven and one and both be put in there. And because the only there way it could happen, people who are going to have one loss. Yeah, the only way it could loss. happen is all the teams that are ahead of them, or at least in that top ten, have to drop. Yeah. They they have to go down. Absolutely. Meaning, you know, Ohio State has to have a bad loss, because in my opinion, a one loss pack, a one loss Big Twelve team gets over that one loss Big Ten team. Is that the is that the statement that the College Football Playoff putting out? Obviously not. With having. Um, 
Michigan State in front of TCU, so that 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 shows that they're more favorable towards that Michigan State team in the Big uh, Big Ten. But um, Ohio State having a bad loss and beating Michigan State, so two one loss teams. Maybe maybe a a Big Twelve can sneak over them. Obviously, if Clemson goes down, they show no love to the ACC. No, that's. That I feel like that's something that, that that's scary. Stanford. Stanford, obviously, there are a lot of undefeated teams left, mm-hmm. and so that that poses a challenge. But, and and most of them will drop. You're gonna see. I think that, all right, one of Ohio State or Michigan State is gonna drop. One of TCU or Baylor has to drop. Um, so that leaves you with eight. That leaves you with Clemson, LSU, then two, yeah, one of those two, one of those two, Iowa. One of Iowa is probably gonna drop. Oklahoma State's probably going to drop, would have to drop. And there's no way Florida gets in with one loss at this point. Unless, at this point, unless, unless Alabama and LSU both go down. No, I would think that if, twice. Florida, if Florida remains at one loss, yeah. LSU or Alabama, um, if, if Alabama loses to LSU, Florida could become the one loss SEC team that gets in. If they were to go undefeated. Mm, interesting. Okay, so you're but, saying LSU goes undefeated. Yeah. And then Florida would jump up and take the spot of Alabama. Yes. I mean, That's theoretically, the they'd have to play it out. But this is good. This is It's late in the season. There's 8-0. So there are a lot of 8-game-played uh, teams. There are a few that have um, only, only played 7. And then Mississippi, oh, excuse me, Ole Miss, the outlier mm-hmm. at 18, who's played 9. Um, but you can start kind of... You know, scenario, yeah. coming up with some different scenarios. Uh, I agree with you. I think that if Clemson loses, you're going to see a college football playoff without either Pac-12 or ACC. Yeah. I don't think one well, loss. What you're seeing right now is one without Pac-12 and Big 12. But that's true. I, I think Cle- well, I it, mean, couldn't, it the, couldn't be without all four, though, I have yeah. to imagine. The, the Unless craziest, Notre Dame as an independent. independent. The craziest part of it all is the ACC gap is the biggest out of all the conferences, being yeah. 1 to 16 and not having another team in the top 25 with Duke going down with the miracle of Miami this past weekend. It's crazy. It really is to see that huge gap between, I guess, technically you could say Notre Dame, but Notre Dame is an independent, but half part of ACC slash whatever. Yeah. But that's the that's the scariest part to me. Clemson goes down in any fashion, and Clemson still has to play Florida State. The Clemson plays Florida State this, this weekend. weekend. Yeah. yeah, so they go down to Florida Let's State. Let's take a look at Clemson's remaining schedule, why don't we? Um, I believe Florida State's really Florida their State, last Yes, because then they have Syracuse, Ooh. Wake, and South Carolina to finish the season. So South Carolina, that's always a heated game, could always get it. And, yep. Sy- you know, Syracuse is a sneaky team. I feel like it's a team we're going to have trouble with. They're one of those teams that, like, they hung with LSU. Yes, they did. Pretty decently. At a different point in the season. It oh, was. It was early. Um, but th- that's one of those teams that you could easily overlook, especially coming off you know a huge win of okay, Florida State. And the thing is, it's Clemson. Any of these teams. That is true. You know, I don't want to say Clemsoning. But, Clemsoning, because yeah. we know how Dabo. I love Dabo. Do you see Dabo is going to buy the entire stadium pizza yes, if they make I saw it? That's awesome. That, was, that is just yeah. he is he is the the ideal college football coach, in game. He seems to have an amazing relationship with the players. He seems to know the modern times. He seems to be respected, even though he's on more on the younger side. He's just one of those guys that we lost to Clemson, and I wasn't a bit upset about who we lost to, just because of how awesome Clemson is as a whole. It's an amazing environment. It's a good program. Very friendly. Like, you know, I want to see them do well. Absolutely. Florida State, on the other hand, no. no. Nobody wants to see Florida no, State no. do well. So, <laughs> really want Clemson to win this weekend. Really want them to show show up in that final four for the ACC, whether it be number one, number two, number three, or number four. Don't really care. Just get Clemson in there. So um, two other questions for you, and I'll pose them. Absolutely. How do you feel there's two teams or two, yeah, really two teams we haven't talked about, Notre Dame getting the five, and how about a non-power five sneaking in? Is it possible? Okay. I hate Notre Dame getting the five. <laughs> Look, I'm not a Notre Dame hater. I, I'm really not. I have no problem with Notre Dame, but I just I don't understand how they are consistently overranked, consistently, and then they suffer a bad loss, and it's like, oh wow, you know, what a shock, what a shock. It's not a shock though. They, I don't think that being an independent holds the same um, 
level of respect anymore. At least it shouldn't in my eyes. They had a tough loss to Clemson. They don't have, you know, they have Stanford left. Stanford's their big game. They have Pitt. Pitt Wh- yeah, They've you know, had Pitt, so Pitt much trouble with Pitt, and I talked to my brother this weekend. Um, he's terrified. He's more ter- He thinks, like, honestly, there's going to be one more loss coming forward, and it's either going to be Pitt or Stanford. I feel like it'd be, it, I mean, they could easily lose both. Going to play at Pitt, their history with Pitt, they have trouble. They clearly have so much trouble with with Pittsburgh. I don't know what it is, but they beat them in basketball last year, and you know how good Notre Dame was in basketball. Pitt's one of those teams that Notre Dame has struggled with historically. Could they blow them out of the water this week? Of course. But for the longest time in ACC, Pitt was ranked at one point. Pitt was number 24, and then they went down to uh, UNC this past weekend or on Thursday, um, for a Thursday night ACC matchup. So that's one team that could give them trouble. Then you have Wake. I mean, that should be a breeze for them at home. Yep. Us? Uh, should be a breeze for them. Yeah, you huh? would, you, I, I don't want to say that. But but yes, they, they it would be never a know. shocker of a loss, I think, if, yes. they, if they lost to us. And then and Stanford, Stanford, judging in how Stanford does. But if you look at who they've played, on paper, that looks like a really, really good schedule. But when you break it down, honestly... Texas is overrated completely, or was at the beginning of the season. <laughs> then went down, had one big win against, yep. I think, Oklahoma. Uh, UVA, that's middle of the pack, low ACC. Georgia yep. Tech, huge disappointment. So if you're looking at, like, regularly, Texas and Georgia Tech, that's two good da- games. Instead, you have three mediocre games. Absolutely. UMass, that's a that's a safety game. Clemson, number one, so that's, that's legit. There you go, you're talking. Um, but well, they uh, lost... They lost. The of game, course, so. of course. But they the way they lost with a fourth and goal stand, that's that's why they look at it like that. That's true. Um it's the same way as as to why the Michigan State ranking is how it is. Yeah. Pushing them back because they got lucky against a Michigan team who's ranked at the lower part of the top twenty five rather than Notre Dame losing not on a lucky standpoint, but you know, just barely losing to a number one team. Then you have Navy. That's a safety game. USC, up and down team, really. That's, that's, yeah, they, they had a good. I mean, obviously, really the good Utah game. win. Really good game. The Utah win yeah. boosts that on Notre Dame's resume. Resume, which is good for them. They're a good team. No lie, they are a good team. They could easily give they them are, a rivalry. They're a yes. weak team. Yes, they're, you know, so. and they did play well that weekend after watching that game. Came down to the final drive, and then Temple, which was supposed to be a safety game, turning into a top twenty-five matchup of College Game Day. And Temple played them really well. Temple, really, yes. really yes, good game. Did. So I was really, really Temple. interesting. Would have been nice to see them just go off. Uh, but yeah, no, they're going to lose one of Pitt or, or Stanford. They're not going undefeated. That Stanford Notre Dame game could potentially be the single most important game of this entire season. Uh, if Pac- it could come down to both Stanford, of them trying to sneak in. Exactly. If Stanford wins out going into this, and Notre Dame is either in or still on the cusp at five. That that game is going to become monumentally important. And now, uh, shifting the yes the topic to a <laughs> non Power Five team, you're looking at the highest ranked Power Five team, Memphis. Anyway, is there any way if they go undefeated, you obviously need stuff in front of them to fall, but is there any way they could sneak in? All right, let me look at their schedule right here remaining. So first off, they beat Ole Miss. That's a big win. Um. Really, Cincinnati is a is a decent win. Other than that, Tulsa, I guess, is a decent win. But nothing big other than that. They have Navy, Houston, Temple, and SMU left. SMU has one win. That's going to be nothing. Um, Temple, unfortunately, because they lost to Notre Dame, is not going to be as highly touted a game. If Temple wins their next two games going into that, it will still be a big matchup for them. Yeah, it'll be nine and one versus undefeated if they get there. Yes, and that could be good. Um, the Houston game that is going to be that's a that, that would be a very quality win. And Navy wouldn't be a bad win. It's just it's you know yeah. it's Navy. It's good wins for their program. I don't I don't think it's possible. Right, I, w- so, I mean, would, it, would I love to see it happen? Sure, it'd be it'd be really cool to root for an underdog. Absolutely. It'd be like Northern Illinois that one year. Um, coming out of a non-Power 5 conference. I think they were ranked maybe 5 or 6, maybe even higher, going into the the Big Bulls. I think it was like 2 or 3 years ago. Yeah. So it would be very interesting to see. I don't think it's going to happen just because, you know, the, the strength of schedule that they play where in comparison to an SEC team, you yeah. would obviously take a one loss. Absolutely. Would you take a two loss? That's that's something that's, that's up question to question. I yeah. think they would. 
unfortunately. Yeah, like an Alabama over a yes. Memphis, a two loss so, Alabama. So what I'll say is this: you're going to have, you're going to have three undefeated teams. I think at the end of the year, I think we're going to look at three undefeated mm-hmm. teams, excluding then, excluding Memphis. Memphis could go undefeated, and but you're going to have yeah. three. Um, just to hypothetically top, say it's the top three that are in there. Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Say it's the top three that are in there. That would give Alabama another loss and no shot at the SEC championship. Florida then could be eleven and one in the championship game. Um, if it's the top three that are on, one team from the Big Twelve is going undefeated. Yes, that's what you can count on. Without 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 a conference championship game, mm-hmm. one team from the Big Twelve is going to go undefeated. So it's either it's Baylor, TCU, or Oklahoma State. Um, that's the thing too. Oklahoma State is behind. It's not even. You know, Memphis can't just worry about the teams that are in front of it. It has to also worry about the teams that are behind it. There's really only one team that is behind it that would give it a shot, but that would be Oklahoma State. Um, if Oklahoma State goes undefeated, then they're going to jump in. Um, I don't think Ohio State's going to go undefeated, but I think one of Ohio State or Michigan State's going to go undefeated. Honestly, I'm afraid for LSU in this game. I don't think they're going to beat Alabama, and then that's going to end their hopes because... It's, that's pretty much to see who gets into the SEC yeah. championship game from the East. Um, Which means another loss pinned, or a possibility of another loss. Or even if there's there. not a loss, then you could have... It would just be hard for me to see. And this is what could happen, and I, you know, I'd be disappointed in it, but you could, have Al, you could have a one loss versus a one loss in the SEC championship game and then come out with a one loss and a two loss, but then, then have LSU at a one yeah. loss who didn't get to play in the championship game. SEC is going to sneak in with possibly two. I, I really there, think if this If there was any the conference I could get to, it's it's going to be them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know that. if it's, if it's so, going to happen that way, but we'll see. So I guess I guess I should try to t- not continue to overanalyze it. We've got we've got no, a lot of weeks to go. No a lot of weeks to go. Memphis is not going to be able to get in. Yeah. I if agree Memphis goes undefeated, they will get a fantastic bowl and kudos to them. That's awesome. Um, but no, I don't, I don't see any way that Memphis could sneak into this, unfortunately. Yeah. What I hate is the fact that these rankings came out the week before, like, for Some lack of, of better words, games. like hell's about to break loose yes. for Clemson being ranked number one. Do you know how much added pressure that puts on them? Even if Dabo doesn't say it, they're playing Florida state. Are they at home or on the road? They're at home. Okay. So that, that, that helps them. Um, I believe. I, I'm pretty sure they were on the road last year. Yeah. Um, yep. They are at home. Yep. Okay. So they're at home. So that helps them tremendously, which is great. So they'll be having, you know, it, it's going to be very loud down there. It's going to be absolute insanity. Florida State and cool. Clemson. Yeah. I can't even imagine what it's no. going to be like. <laughs> so, but Florida State also has a lot of extra incentive to take down Clemson at this point. Whether that happens or not, I'm not sure. It's it really is going to be a dog. It's it's going to be an absolute insanity down in Clemson. And yeah. that this could be a week that Clemson falls just because of the fact that there's so much riding on it. If they get through this week, I think it's smooth sailing for the rest of the year for them. But having Florida State come in just after these rankings, that's tough. Now, a 2-4 Alabama. Alabama's been here before. They've had the pressure. LSU hasn't been here in a while. They haven't been up to this no, to haven't. this point in a while where they've been ranked this high and they're in this high stake of a game. I could see LSU dropping, too. I could see Alabama dropping. Could. It's It's could. very possible yeah. to see both. I'm not going to make a prediction yet just because it's so hard and so many things have shifted. from. The, I can't even remember what we said the first time. Probably was not that pretty. Um, I'm pretty sure I had UCLA in there. So, like, <laughs> overall... We really have no idea where it's going to go. If you had to, if you had to pick a top four, what are you looking at? And I'll give you mine. Okay. All right. If I had to pick a top four, I'm going to go with. You, in no particular order either. To go? Um, if that helps. Okay. Uh, Michigan State, LSU, TCU, and Florida. Okay, so Florida sneaks in after LSU beats Alabama. Because yes, and honestly, that's I I hate to say I think Alabama is going to beat LSU this weekend. Yes. Now, wait, is the Baylor quarterback out or no? Um, I yes. I remember seeing I something about that. So. That may have changed my opinion. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, yeah. I'm going to go with Clemson. Clemson. I I think you know Watson has been. 
near perfection this year. He you know, he's had he's had his ups and downs in the beginning, but recently, I mean, the dude knows how to drive an offense. He knows how to screw up, <laughs> but he knows how to come right back up yeah. and and look at it and go, I don't I don't know what just happened. What are you talking about? And and throw for three more touchdowns. So okay. I really think Clemson is going to get in. I don't think they're going to lose. So that's one. I think Ohio State's going to ride high. It's just the way they are, and they're going to sneak in somehow. I don't I don't want to see it happen. I'm not wow. a huge Ohio State fan, um, but I, I mean. That it's it's a really good program. JT Barrett going down this week, which is another interesting development in the life of Ohio State. So it's not going to help them in that respect, but we'll see. We'll see where they go um, from here. Regardless, that's two, uh, three. I'm going to put Baylor. I think I think TCU's okay. had a couple close calls this year, and I think playing Baylor and Oklahoma State this year, one of them is going to fall down. One of them is going to. To take a tumble, so that's my three teams and my SEC team. Um, you know, I want to say Alabama. I want to say Alabama comes out, beats LSU okay. this weekend. It it really does, but that's just the way Alabama is. Yeah. It's that traditional program, that rough and tough football. Sticks it to LSU. I mean, the way they played Georgia, that's a scary team. They yeah. have one loss. Nick Saban's in there kicking some butts, and who knows where it's gonna go. So. I, that's what that's my top four. I think it'll change drastically. It it has changed drastically since since a month and a half ago when we started two months ago. So we'll see where it goes. But that's my top four right now. Fantastic. Yeah. Um. I guess just a final point to wrap it up. This is looking ahead to the Clemson game. Um. I completely agree with the point you made about there being added incentive for Florida State. I'll say this: Florida State is sitting at sixteen right now. It's seven and one. They sneaky. They have to be saying to themselves, all right, we get this win here. They're going to jump up at least like seven spots. Yes. You're going to jump up into top ten. You can see how highly they rank Clemson, too, putting Notre Dame at five. Right. NC State, Chattanooga, those back-to-back games mean nothing. But you have an opportunity with Florida for the last game of the season. That's a huge game. The motivation there to win out, if they win out, I think they actually could get a spot in this. Their schedule is a lot different than Clemson's because they bookend it with Florida. They have a very, very legitimate chance to land in the college football. And that kills me more out. than Alabama making it in. Just yeah. because, I mean, I want to see an ACC team make it. Make it. Do but I want it, it, do I require, want it, yeah. do I want it to be Florida State now? It would require all LSU, um, excuse me, all SEC teams being at least one loss. Yes. You couldn't have an undefeated come out of SEC and then have Florida State. You can't have a one loss. loss. Yeah, because you you're going to have, have loss. It's. I really believe that it's going to come down to um, an undefeated and a one loss SEC team. It just based on how they rank SEC teams. And I mean, it is justified. Looking, look at who they. Uh, yes and no. It, it, the SEC beats themselves up. That's why they give them that extra team. But. The way they lose some games are shocking. We talk about it. When they played Bulls last year against yes, other was... Power 5 conference teams, they lost a majority of them. So The only SEC team to win a bowl They hype them up so much. But was Georgia. The only SEC yeah. team to win a bowl last year was Georgia. I don't really know what to say. It, it's so crazy because the way the media hypes them up, I'm one to believe, like, hey, I can't bad talk the SEC. Like, deep down inside, I really don't think SEC football is, like, you know, a step above to, like, you know, they're not on a pedestal in comparison to other no, Power 5 they conferences. they were. Five years yes. ago, that is the marquee conference, absolutely. But the way they've hyped them up since, it's just... No. It you've hasn't had, been. Like had, Iowa, for example. I think any top two in any Power 5 could beat Iowa, probably. That's what think, I'm saying. Like Clemson, like Florida, Clemson, State, Florida could State could beat them. TCU, Oklahoma State, and Baylor could... Or at least, no, you know, I I, at least the it's in favor in my opinion, than in an undefeated Iowa team. that That's my opinion. And they're ranked higher really than most have, of our teams. Yeah, they have nothing coming out for the rest of the schedule either. No. Indiana, Minnesota. Well, Indiana will be a tough game, but it's not really a game that's going to build their resume. Minnesota, Purdue, and Nebraska. They're not going to be tested until the championship game. Yeah. And that this is like sort of my point as to why... SEC, like, in my opinion, the SEC schedule is, like, you bring up Iowa as an example, playing in the Big Ten, that's why I don't see them going anywhere. That's why they're ranked so much lower in comparison to these other SEC teams in, in different, in like, the, um, how am I trying to phrase this? The conferences. Yes. So, 
an undefeated Iowa going all the way down to nine. That's the lowest ranked undefeated. Or no, Oklahoma State is. That's even crazier. Yeah. Um, so it's not the lowest ranked, but Oklahoma State there too. You can see how much more of a bolster they put. So they put a one-loss Florida over in Oklahoma State. That's what I'm saying with the college football playoff, the Absolutely. way they rank them. It's, it's, I would say at least it's crazy. in terms of Iowa, Iowa's, I don't think Iowa's spot is bad. Um, I don't think Notre Dame is the number five team in the country. I will continue to say that. I'll hold it until they prove me wrong. I don't think they're the number five team in the country. Alabama, um, I don't think they should be ahead of Baylor, TCU. Yeah, one of those teams um, has to get in. It, I don't based think, on what happened last year, they got to get in. Right, one of them. right. I don't think they should be ahead of Baylor or TCU. If you're going by the eye test, they should be ahead of Michigan State, but also by the eye test, they should be ahead of Ohio State. So if you really want to make the case, Alabama could be number three right now very easily. Um, on the other hand, Iowa, I would say, is an undefeated team that I that Alabama is most definitely ahead of. And if you look at their only two one-loss teams, Iowa, aside from Oklahoma State, is the worst undefeated team right now. You know, yeah. But, so I don't. I think that their position is good. Um, I think that I think Oklahoma State's better, in my opinion. I think Iowa. Got, do you? Okay. Yeah. All right. So then. I think Big Twelve teams in general. I I do not understand the hype of Big Ten. The the Big Ten. No, I don't understand the hype of Big Ten. The Big but Ten I don't is so. Think, yeah. I mean. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. I just think that if Iowa wins out, there. I mean, they'll at least have a good win in the bowl game. They might not have one anywhere else. Right. But they'll have taken down an undefeated either Michigan State or Ohio right. State, presumably. Right. So in that event, if if then you have if to Iowa ends up you thirteen and zero, no reason for them not to get in. Agreed. And I would hope Agreed. that they will put them in. Yeah, it's going to be interesting going forward. But all right, that's our breakdown: college football playoff rankings. Stay tuned for more. Next week is going to be insanity on our part, just trying to break down every <laughs> single thing that happened this weekend, especially weekend. if Clemson if and can, LSU go down. Yeah, if you can. Put work aside. Just sit by the TV Saturday. Oh, yeah. It is going to be some great college football all day Cannot long. wait. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, I don't know if we really need to call up anything. Actually, that one email, the last Mark Majewski email was fantastic. Mm. Um, little little Boston College hockey coming yeah, at you. I'd absolutely. love to talk about it. So for those of you who don't know, Boston College hockey sitting at a one-loss team right now. They're ranked number three in the nation. Um. Starting off extremely hot, one terrible lost RPI to start the season, but I mean, have played flawlessly since then, going out, um, getting a big win for a uh, home opener against Wisconsin, a, a, a very good team in their own right, going out to Colorado and sweeping Colorado College, then coming back, beating number five ranked Denver while we were number four, and then... Uh, in, in a last second goal by Matty Gaudreau. And then last night, just absolutely it's demolishing oh our God. state rival in UMass. So uh, they've got Maine this weekend, Friday and Sunday, and then take on Michigan State next Friday. So they've got a nice little little home stretch coming. I don't think they have anything till Friday, if I'm not mistaken, if there's any away no, games in between. So. Friday, Friday. Is it Friday, Sunday? Friday, Sunday for Maine, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely fantastic um Fantastic game last night. They really just clicked on, on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. They've shut out four of their last five opponents. Yeah. Um, as you said. Denver's being the only one that did, what was the final score yeah, that? Four to three? Four to three, yeah. And obviously, I mean, Denver's number five team in the country, so you can't really expect to um, to do that. But that's that was a quality win, mm -hmm. and it really solidifies how good this team is. Oh, yeah. Coming out, you they just sent a message to Hockey East last night. And they didn't, they didn't score in the first period, by the way. Really? Yeah, this is the really interesting uh, part. So it was 0-0 going into period number two, and then they dropped five or six in the second they period. Dropped, they dropped At five least in five. The five in the second period. No, you know what? They dropped six because when I arrived out of class, they I saw the sixth goal, and that was at the end of the second period. Six in one period. Absolute insanity. Boston College showing why... They are ranked that high. We need to see this right now. We need to see this from a team, especially with a little added incentive. For those of you who don't know, Jeremy Bracco, mm -hmm. our our phenom freshman, our number one recruit, or was our number one recruit, left Boston College this past week to explore possibilities in the NHL and join the minor league hockey organization of the Maple Leafs, I believe. Yes. yes. So he was drafted this year, chose to come to Boston College to a lot of people's dismay, and then... Um, 
took off, took off like the true champ he is. So Jerry York had a lot of things to say about him, not very nice things, but did he? Uh, he kept it very classy, but he basically said, you know, Boston College is a, a very rigorous program. It's not for everyone. It's really tough for a lot of people to meet those standards. So best of luck to him. I, I know he's he's gonna good. He's going to do big things, but we've got a lot of good guys here who can handle it. Like, pretty good for Jerry York. He doesn't usually say a lot, so it was great for him to come no, out I and say you, that. I, I mean, first off, if I'm a senior on this team and if I'm a freshman on this team, this really stings. I mean, it stings for the whole team across the board. Oh, yeah. But if you're a senior leader, that's insulting to you personally. If you're a freshman in a locker with him, if you're Wood, if you're Fitzgerald, if you're one of them... How are you? I, I'd I'd be so furious with him. You come in as a recruiting class. That's your class, friend. That's that's your family. Above anything, yeah. I mean, your family with the entire team, man. Mm-hmm. But your recruiting class, your year, that's something special. Oh yeah. And they have to be like, I can't believe that's a brother walking out the door on you. And I I, I, I I hope someday in the future we get to see these two people meet up in in the NHL or the OHL or where. Yeah. I'd be interested to see. I'd be interested to see how much allegiance there is with that. Because I think we're at an era in sports where I I'm I don't trust that all of the freshmen are are particularly angry with Bracco. It's it's a thing where college hockey players see money, and this is the way that the way that it's set up with college hockey players getting drafted and basically having ownership yeah. through their entire <laughs> collegiate careers is when they finish a year Hannafin for well, actually Hannafin wouldn't count because Hannafin was not um, was not drafted his first year. But looking at the guys who get drafted going into college, and then when they finish a year, you know the money starts calling their name. Of if I go through another year and get hurt, it's all gone. That's what I think Bracco saw. I have no idea why you would ever go to school in the first place. That's the part that shocks me. What I thought he was going to do was go to the NHL. That's what I thought he was going to do. He comes to Boston College. He stays for four games, three games, and then just takes off, apparently not in a very classy way. That's shocking. It's 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 something where if I'm in his NHL team, I'm a little nervous. That's what I was talking about with a lot of people is the fact that him being in an organization through – like Boston College is the premier college hockey – program in the nation guarantee yeah well, no matter where they're ranked in terms of producing oh, yeah. nhl talent and in across the board classiness best coach h- historic program so on so forth him leaving that is a little shaky for you as i don't know if you agree with me as an nhl i, I mean i know professionals view guys differently that's why they go out there and they draft you know these big shot guys with problems like yeah. NFL guys because or NHL. All exactly. Cause it's all about winning and what they bring to the table, but him going to this program that if I'm that NHL team, if I'm the Maple Leafs, I'm a little nervous. Like, why'd you leave? That's what, I, that's the first question because I ask. It's not like, I know you're after the money, but my goodness, like the fact that you leave mid year shows that you're not committed to something. Who says he's, who's going to say he's not going to be like a, here, here's a parallel Cespedes, for example, Cespedes has been on four teams in two years. He's left mid-year every single yes. time because he doesn't gel well with teams, just the way he is. Yeah. He may have found a home with the Mets, but regardless, what if this guy mid-year goes, nah, I don't really like him, or they, or he ends up on a team with a BC guy and he, he doesn't respect him for leaving the BC program, suddenly there's a little, you know, it's something that could have lasting effects. You know, above it's anything very interesting. else, and I think that the only, the only redeeming thing about this for him is that people can look at it and say, you know what, he's an 18-year-old kid. Yes. But at the same time, you're in a league where there's a lot of 18-year-old kids. So I would say this. Above anything else, it makes it very clear as soon as you are entering the organization, as soon as you are entering the OHL, the NHL, wherever he falls by the end of this year, it makes it very clear that he is a person who is about him. Yes. He is a you person, not a we person. Yes. By any stretch. That that is the best. You, You could not have summed that up better. I don't know if you saw the... Did you see the Thatcher Demko retweet? No. Excellent. So BC Hockey Blog, um, I actually hadn't heard of them. They're, I, I guess, just you know a blog run by fans, so on, kind of like a BC interruption type thing. They tweeted that they were like, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't want to misquote it to, to put it on Thatcher, but to the extent of, I don't know if you can find it, but to the extent of, you know, it's nice or, you know, it, it's actually better that Bracco left 
because he was just a distraction to the locker room. And Thatcher Demko retweeted that. And if there's one guy I have respect for on the Boston College team, it's Thatcher Demko. A hundred Absolutely. thousand guy times. Seems like a dude class is ass. honestly probably the <coughs> the funniest guy, the nicest dude. Um, just seems like an all around class act. Funniest heck, lad. There it is. Nope. Yeah. In school today, but the bottom line is BC is better off without Bracco. He quit on his teammates and coaches. So I even put it looser than that. Yeah. I wasn't even that. That was, that was pretty and damn he, direct. And the best part is he hasn't like taken it off his retweets. Absolutely I love not. it. I love it because I see that all the time. Professional athletes will retweet something. Somebody will screenshot it and it'll be gone because the coach sees you know, it so on. Good for Thatcher. I think he, he has a right to a voice. Like that is awesome. It's awesome that he did that. I love it. People are fed up with Bracco. You know, him being on the team, obviously you still want him there. Anybody would still want him there. It's common sense. He's an amazing player, and he's going to do really good things. But he's always going to have this little asterisk. Could it, sure, it could be a problem of immaturity, but really, really, really interesting. Really interesting. So um, just a little tidbit, and I think it's inspiring the BC players. Miles Wood, Colin White, Casey Fitzgerald. They're all playing out yeah. of their minds. If I can, out of their minds. And Miles can, Wood, by the way, maybe maybe the best freshman in college hockey. Absolutely, right now. I wanted to highlight that kid has been playing out of four, his mind. Four points last night, I think. Four points, not goals, but overall four, he's four had, or five points. I'm pretty Nuts. sure he has. He's had four multi-point games already. Three yeah. or four multi-point games. Yeah, has scored in six out of seven of their contests. It's Nuts. unbelievable. This kid is the real deal out of Manchester, Mass. Just an absolute joy to watch play. Kid is he, all over the he ice. He really is. That's the thing. This team, man, these freshmen are all coming in. The energy on this squad. Yeah. They are flying up and down yeah. the ice. It's, I got to say, for any BC students who you know are out there and listening, don't know the weekday games are going on, anything like that, keep up with this team. It's going to be over fun. There if you don't, because yeah. we love to complain here at BC about how we don't put in good athletic programs. Let me tell you. If you miss the boat on this one, you're going to regret it. They are yeah. an incredible team. It is going to be a really fun season to watch. Oh yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. I'm really, really annoyed. Well, it's good for you. Well, not good for you, but the fact that you live closer, it works that you're going to get to see BU and Providence hockey because they're tell over me you're break. Coming back. I'm not right. unfortunately. Is BU the one that's like three days? Yeah, before? I'll be, I'll be on a service trip oh, in New Orleans, I believe. Down. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Giving back to the community, you God, bad boy. Yeah. Um, no, what are they teaching you here? Yeah, honestly, the okay. Jesuits have taken over. <laughs> Reg- I mean, all the Jesuits know about hockey. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the Friar is the one. That makes the fucking sense. That does make logo. sense. You got me there. Um, <laughs> but I mean, this team is going to be so so fun to watch. I love watching the freshmen. I love seeing a a mature Alex Tuck, a mature Zach Sanford. They're coming into their own. Absolutely, um, Zach Sanford. I will say has been the yeah. most impressive. He was a mistake prone player last year. We'll he say. was out of the three freshmen we brought in last year. He was the worst of the three. Absolutely. Then again, I mean, you're comparing him you're with comparing Noah, to Han- Noah who's Hannafin in the NFL and it, Tuck, who will be soon enough. Yeah. So absolutely. I mean, that's not and you know that's what? not against Zach Sanford. It's just saying no. he stepped up tremendously. He's going to he be a great player fantastic. this year. He can. He's going to be a guy that people lean on. Which last year he was more someone that was looking for someone to lean on. Attention. Uh, yeah. Uh, Excuse me. He was occasionally a liability yeah. out there. He has so very much not been that. He mm-hmm. has been fantastic thus far. Um, and Tuck is really, he just yeah. looks like he's a man on a mission. Dude's huge. Dude's huge. I love it. <laughs> um, the Fitzgerald tandem is awesome. It's I love awesome. seeing Casey and Ryan. Last night, a little bit of a brawl was sick. Ryan Fitzgerald getting thrown out for a cause. Awesome. That was awesome to see. Like, you want to see that fire. You want to see that passion. I don't care if you get thrown out. No, Obviously, it. BC is a, is a program where it's like all about class and so on. But hockey is a sport where it's going to get you know rough and tough Absolutely. down the trenches. So, bang, you know Ryan Fitzgerald standing up for a cause. It was awesome. So him and Casey are going to be a really really cool pair to watch. Also, sneaky a person last year who really didn't. He was more like you know behind the scenes, kind of away from the hype. Austin Cangelosi, I was, I wow, I love this. Yes. Austin Cangelosi, so he's been he got the start the last two games. He has um, looked good. He's too. looked he's very looked good. good. I think he scored two goals yes. in the Wisconsin game. Yep, two um, in the Wisconsin. Game. I was so mad. I was my goal was to make every game this year that was on campus that I was here for, but unfortunately, I was I was on a train, but I followed that game like ah, no other, yes. listening to the radio broadcast. Just this team is fun. This team it's is fun. fun. Come it's out to Conti Friday. I think people. I think a lot of people just don't 
have experience with hockey or exposure to hockey. Yeah. I gotta say, it's one of the most fun sports. It's fun college sport. As far as... We have a great atmosphere, yeah. Yes, I would say this is one of the best student sections for it. You you gotta come out. It's uh, it's a really fun team to watch. Yeah, so um, we'll keep recapping them week to week. Hopefully, we're talking about two more wins this weekend over Maine. Maine, one of those teams in the Hockey <clears> East that could always come and get you. Honestly, I thought UMass last last night, I didn't think they were going to beat us, but I thought they were going to give us a contest, especially after that first period. But yeah. BC proving them wrong. So if they can stay you know, flying high right now, stay in the top three, I think who's in front of them, North Dakota and Providence, yeah. those are two teams that, well, one of them we're going to match up with Providence, twice this year. Get, so yep. we're gonna get our let's shots. see it. Let's see. It's going to be very very high stakes it's going to be awesome it's going to be a great year in bc hockey so let's go on we got 10 minutes left we'll run down the nfl scoreboard uh this past week not too much craziness a couple things came out and shocked me like aaron Rodgers throwing for under 100 yards the buccaneers beating the falcons in overtime um the ravens as i said man something about me and the raven did i pick the ravens maybe i didn't i think i went with you with the chargers but I always have this feeling about the Ravens, and they did get a, a big win this week. Not that it matters for them, but a, a, a big win for the Ravens, last second win. Other than that, uh, Titans going down really bad to the Texans, something that we did not see coming after, you know, basically, you know, crapping on the Texans for like 10 minutes. Yeah. But we'll move into this week, or you want to talk about last week too, because I know it started with your favorite team, the Patriots. Uh, can dismantling well that's the thing I just don't yeah you don't i mean what do we need to talk about they no, they threw great... the ball and they won that that's straight up what the patriots did i'd like to talk about the giants for literally 30 seconds yo you can't spell elite without eli <laughs> six touchdowns and we still lost yeah man that just speaks about your defense though yeah. holy moly yeah it was it was a very poor game for our defense i honestly still don't know how we lost but it's promising like i wasn't too upset after that loss just because of the fact that, well, first of all, you can't really hate Drew Brees. But other than that, that this conference that we're playing in, especially the Cowboys not getting a touchdown, was awesome. Eli scoring six and or five, one of the two, and the Cowboys not getting a touchdown. Um, and then you have the Redskins and the Eagles. Like, come on, we could, we we will steal this division, and I love every second oh, wow. of it. That's we're going cool. to do it. Cool. Well, we keep putting up points, like. Our defense only has to stop Matt Castle and Kirk Cousins and, you know, whoever has an arm on the Eagles. So, regardless, like, yeah, well, I don't really... I don't, well, perhaps the yeah. best quarterback of the three right now, honestly. You would never think it, but Matt Castle and uh, Kirk Cousins? Come on now. Come on now. Like, look, I, you know what? I, we're going to win it. We're, we're taking the division. Right, right. There's no way we don't take the division. I don't understand. This is This is the year we're going to do it. It's, the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Last Let's point move on the NFC week, East. Yeah. Matt Castle, perhaps the worst two minute drill I have ever seen. <laughs> so funny. So, so funny. So I will. I laugh that entire like two minutes of just straight laughing, pretty much. Like a, a slight chuckle under my breath to like full on like laughter. It was fantastic. So we'll move into this week. We got about eight minutes to break down each game to the best of our ability. We'll start with the Thursday night game. Quinn. Browns and Bengals. Bengals, Bengals undefeated. Undefeated. This is the first time we've had so many 7-0 teams in NFL history. Um, look for the first time we've had so many 8-0 teams in NFL history because yep. the Browns are going down. Johnny Football getting the start, though. I'm oh, psyched up. It uh-oh. will make it worth watching tomorrow night yeah. at 825. Thank but the Bengals are getting the wing Thank goodness he's playing because, you know, they have to make a change. You know, what do you have to lose? That's why I say with BC football. <laughs> you know, I won't get on the rant with BC football, but Yo, John Fadul or Faduli, I don't know how you say his name, actually pretty decent. Like, no no lie, leading that fourth quarter drive for the, you know, 5,000 oh people that God. stayed behind, it was awesome. So, he didn't you have know, a terrible game. Exactly. Fair enough. All right. Did, did you fin- have a point to finish there? Yeah, play Johnny Manziel. You have nothing to lose. That's what I was saying, how we don't have anything to lose. <laughs> Throw on the... Throw on the the dude that we just signed up for the team. So, you know, he signed a waiver. But he's here. Johnny's here. Bengals are going to win. All right. <laughs> like, you know, John Faduli can play too, but, you know, we're probably not going to win. That's what happened right. with Manziel. Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. John, what John. Yeah. Amazing, right? It's almost like we planned you, it that way. You. Oh, Redskins, right. Pats. Simple, simple. NFC East, man. Not going to do it. Brady taking over. It'll be. Almost 2,500 yards, 20 TDs. God, I just as heck. Yeah, I know. 
Pats. It's amazing you know. that people have been talking about the Patriots going undefeated since like week two, even <coughs> even before the season. Yeah, so I hate it. it I it's like it. it's so much. It's so much deserved attention. It really is. Just because the Patriots, they love, people love to hype up the Patriots. It's amazing how much the NFL likes to take down the Patriots, but then say, like, but make them 100% the percent being the like, time. hey, this guy's going undefeated. Yeah, we're the Patriots. Did so, you see, really crazy. Um, did you see the Barstool post by Feidelberg earlier today? Um, it was Probably. just a couple hours ago. Um, Belichick is such oh, a yes, sorcerer. Yes, He's yes. wondering if people found a way to cheat the coin flip. Somebody got a CBS Sports alert that CBS Sports actually put out. It has been confirmed on the internet. NFL, have the Patriots found a way to get an edge on coin flips? He it's just real he estate is, in other people's he, heads. Exa- no, he, has, he has literally bought the entire you know Hollywood Boulevard strip in the NFL's head. That's how much space he has. He has bought you know every you know it, every real estate agent in the game. Every it's insane. It's insane. Belichick's in there like no other from ever since ever since he, he he's nuts. I don't even know how else to put it. The NFL is even considering him knowing that thinking he cheats a coin flip. It's, just, it's I crazy. It's absurd. I, I just, don't understand. Yeah, the NFL know, yeah, is yeah. so obsessed with the Patriots. How about you just back off, let them do their thing, give them the hype that people are giving them, and we'll see what happens. Patriots are going to win this weekend. It's buddy. I love it. Yeah, Pat, Pats are going to win this week. Redskins are not. I mean, they'll put up a fight, maybe, but probably not. All right, this is going to be a great game. Yeah. Packers, Panthers, seven and zero. Panthers, six and one. Packers. Um, this is going to be the one thing that's going to prevent the most eight and zero teams. Or... What the heck happened this weekend to the Packers? I, I actually know. didn't catch the game because I was watching the World Series, so I haven't even looked into Same it. Here, but I, I know Denver has a very eyes. good defense. So they they really you know what they legitimized they themselves. Showed. Yeah, in my eyes, they did, and say. and they they probably are the best defense in the NFL right now. Absolutely. Um, so Packers going on the road, they're coming off a very tough, tough week, but I really don't see them going down to the Panthers. I think the Panthers are very good, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I just feel like they played a sloppy game this week on a Monday night. It was a wet, you know, people are people are protesting the game up in the rafters. So just just a weird game down there in Charlotte. So I, I really think the Packers will come in this week and and right their wrongs and, and get a big win in Charlotte. Absolutely. All right. Three minutes on the clock. We'll try to fly through yep. the rest of these. Saints, Titans. Saints. They beat Saints. my Giants bad. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The Titans got nothing to play for. I believe it's Medenberger again. You know so. what's crazy, though? Drew Brees had seven touchdowns in that game. That puts him at 15 for the season. Almost doubled his, <laughs> his touchdown total yeah, that, right there. That shows for the Giants defense, I guess. That's, that's wow. tough. And Yeah. Yeah, and it shows to what kind of season even happened before that. That's true. All right, Bills, Dolphins. Uh, Bills Mafia probably coming out and representing this yeah, weekend. Yeah, the most drunk fan base yeah. in the entire country. So they'll they'll go really hard for this game, but I think the, the Dolphins will come in and get a last-second touchdown to sneak away from it. I will. Interesting. All right, I'm going to go with the Bills. I'm a big believer in, uh, what's his name, Coach Campbell? Is that who it is? Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, Rams at the Vikings. I'm a big believer. I say it every week. <laughs> My roommate, Brian Powers, thinks Todd Gurley is the best running back in the he NFL. Is. Will it be true this weekend? We'll find out. Rams take it by a touchdown over I Minnesota. I'm going to go with the Rams. Uh, Jags, Jets. Yo, ACDC blowing up the Jets <laughs> this week. I'm a huge believer in ACDC. Regardless, there's no way that the Jets are going to lose at home to the Jags. It can't happen. If they lose this week, they're done in the AFC East. Yeah, we can't. We both said that we didn't think they were going to lose last week yeah. coming off the Pats loss. Um, no, I don't think they lose to the Jags either. I think they get the win at home. Mm-hmm. Go to five and three. Jets the pick there. All right, Raiders, Steelers. Steelers, pretty, pretty good game against the the seven and zero Bengals. They took them down to the final stretch. Big Ben throwing a horrid in, interception, pretty much to end the game. Raiders coming off a big win against the Jets. I think they take it at the Steelers. Fantastic. I like the pick. I don't know if I'm gonna go with it with you. I think I'll have this to is a 50-50 coin flip game, I do, in my opinion. I do. I, I think the Raiders have a great shot. I'm going to go with the Steelers, though. Um, Giants, Buccaneers. NFC champion, New York Giants beat the Buccaneers. I said they beat the Buccaneers, too, but Doug Martin's going to have a field day. <laughs> um, 49ers, Falcons. Falcons, really, really tough yeah, loss, but man. no way they go down two weeks in a row. No, 49ers are track. too bad, especially with Carlos Hyde out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Falcons there. Broncos, Colts. This is fantastic. The Colts are going to sink to three and six here. Yeah, but still number one in their AFC South, I, I believe. So, That's incredible. Yeah, Broncos, <laughs> huge, huge win. Peyton Manning, 
a little little homecoming in Indianapolis, they're going to take it. Denver gets it. Peyton's got seven touchdowns on the season, man. It's a touchdown. <laughs> I don't know how game. they're scoring. I really don't know how he's, they're scoring. He's a he's a negative four uh, interception to touchdown ratio. That's incredible. It's incredible, man. He's seven though. But he's still quarterback in the team to a seven Amen. record, and will be an eight no record. Put it on the books. True that. Eagles, Cowboys. This is a game of who cares. They're both really bad. It really doesn't matter at this point. Um, this is a coin flip game. It That's really could inaccurate. go either way. It's just so inaccurate. They're, Eagles are going to win this game. We're going to get back on track and are going to win Both teams are so East. irrelevant. The Giants <laughs> have taken it. They've pretty much locked it up already. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter who wins this game. It's not going to come down to anything. So, I mean, the Cowboys are too bad right now. I'll give it to the Eagles, but yeah, I, I'd rather see the Cowboys the win just because the Cowboys are going down. They're not going anywhere. I see you, the, yes, you the Eagles have a lot more upside than the Cowboys do right now. Even with Des Bryant coming back, there's their people are fighting on the sidelines. Greg Hardy signing a hundred dollar bills. Like, come on, Cowboys are a joke. No way. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the Eagles are going to win, but I think it's going to take them a little bit further. Um, that's a really another, it's probably going to be an ugly Sunday night game, unfortunately. And finally, the Monday night game, even uglier with the Chargers and the Bears. Two and six at home against two and five. Oh, man. Just disgusting. Oh, yeah, it's really like, gross. I mean, th- this other years would be a quality matchup between Jay Cutler and Phillip Rivers, probably throwing for a million and a half yards each and like 18,000 interceptions. But like, it would still be pretty interesting. At this point... This is another coin flip game. Keenan Allen out for the year. That doesn't help the Chargers. That's tough. I, I really don't know where this is going. I'm going to pick the Chargers just because they're at home and no other reason, and the Bears are pretty bad. All right. I'm going to go with the Bears. I don't know why. I'm just going to go with the Bears. Right. Why not? Why All not? right. That's pretty much it. We're going to wrap it up here. We'll be back next week talking about college football playoff, the crazy week that was in college football. Boston College's first win in the ACC, and so much more. We'll let you know how everything goes. Best of luck. BC going to dominate this weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Wednesday is 8 to 9. Matt Ryan, 21 to 24, 286 yards, three touchdowns. Still a What's dude. better than this? Guys being dudes. Matt Ryan, that's a dude. Heisman Trophy. Bronco Nagurski Award. Ultimate dude. Raji on my left. Herzog on my right. Two dudes. O-line you, bunch of dudes. Dudes to the right, dudes to the left, stuck in the middle with you. WZBC, the Boston College Radio Network, the voice of the Eagles.